a spiritual intervention. And no matter if you're listening to me, whether you're afraid to come out here or not, allow the prophetic in God in me to move. That God said today shall be a day of spiritual intervention. That every demonic force on your family yoke shall break. Somebody's child was suicidal last night. God said, watch me do it. You don't understand that God said, I call the alcoholic out. I bind every spirit of iniquity. I come and you done tried. Now listen, this is the way this works. See, this is how it works. God will instruct me. And so you've been trying to shake an addiction. See, y'all don't understand. Wait till you hear the message. God said, this is the day that everything in your family bloodline Set up a shadow of the very alcoholic. You done tried rehab three, four, five times, and it ain't work. Your son is addicted to marijuana. So is your daughter. But God said, Watch me. Give a spiritual intervention today. Leave her right there. So this is the way it's gonna work. Since you ain't gonna move, I'ma move for you. Cause every demon is gonna leave here today. Shall I say you struggling with your lifestyle?
one in my family too.
over right there. I need pillows all over this altar. Go and leave it right there. child did something for you today. Pay attention to me. See, God gave me a word specifically for this house and those online, and I'm going to give it. But your child did something for you today, and she barely could talk. Now, I got a God child, and she drives me crazy because sometimes Nana I don't really say the words, but she showed us Thursday that she talks and she understands very well. And so what you don't understand is because you ain't got. Because of her praises you about to get. So take the check and go to your landlord. Get up. 
As she was in worship, I don't know how old the baby is, but that baby child was back there clapping her hands at Asho, and she was lifting her hands. I don't even think she got teeth yet, but God said that child's prayers and her worship had a voice that humans don't understand, but God says, I hear the prayers of a righteous child that save a situation. Oh, no, 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 no. Are we about to have a spiritual intervention? You ain't got to look at me like I'm crazy, child, because y'all think prophets ain't real. No, we are very real. And we hear God watch the fruit. Just like that child went live from Concord Mills and said that they were shooting up the mall. God said, I know the prayers. I know the petitions. And I know what goes on in your house. The problem is y'all listening to folks that ain't got no fruit. But God said, I shall be the mouthpiece. And you shall speak to the people concerning their problems. And God sent me here to tell you today is a spiritual intervention for your home. I'm gonna hurry up. Y'all, 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 y'all need to go on and get free. Y'all keep talking to me about these generational curses, and you don't even know how to break one. But God woke me up, husband, and he gave me an instruction on how to break every generational curse in your home. He gave me vital information that pastors ain't going to tell you how to get debt under control, how to get your family under control. He gave me directive. He told me today, I'm going to show them how to stay from death door. He said the bloodline of suicide go come under subjection. He said the bloodline of alcoholism coming under subjection. He said Y'all better, I'm listening here. We ain't got much long in this building. So go on, tab the church. Go on, run around the parking lot. Go ahead and do it because God said today, He said, I'm coming through that church and I'm going to break every curse. I'm going to show the family structure what it is to experience God. 
Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all, come on, y'all. I ain't got no time to play. I got to go with this man. He said, because you got to get away, darling. You've been crying for days and days and days. I said, go, why am I crying like this? He said, because I'm moving. I got stuff that I need to say. And inside was a well of living water. And God said, today, it shall burst. Watch this. Okay, let's do this quick, fast, in a hurry so I can get out of here. Y'all kill me because my inbox is full of generational curses. My inbox is how do I save my family? My inbox is full of what do I do? My inbox is full of stuff. I don't know how to love. I love the wrong person. My heart was broken. My daughter is addicted. My son is addicted. I can't have a good marriage if it hit me in the face. But God said, what are they doing? Do they not understand that each and every one of you had the ability to break a generational curse? There's books on it. There's tapes on it. But yet still folks don't know. I don't know if I'm gay or straight. Yeah, I said it. Not me. I'm good. But I don't know what's going on in my loins. I'm struggling with something. I'm addicted to abuse. I'm addicted to going to jail. My son is in and out of prison. My daughter's in and out of prison. My my daughter is a runaway. My son is a castaway. What am I doing? God said, hold on. Listen to me with the little lips on your man. Where's the key? Where's the key? Bless you, good. Stay right there. Asada their feet to the floor. Do you know what that means? Come here. When you saddle someone's feet to the floor, that means that they ain't gonna move. Gosh, yeah, where you been? God said to tell you, huh, not only would he solder the children's feet to the floor, huh, but he said, I'm going to solder yours to the floor huh, because you've been moving and still ain't got to break through. Huh. God said, stand still huh, and see the salvation of the Lord. Huh. from every abusive relationship you came across in your life. Our God said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. And you ain't going back. I sign on your feet to the floor that you won't go back. No more generational curse you going to break today. I shine on the very thought. I shine on the very assignment. Keep doing that. I'm speaking to the air. I'm speaking to the air. I'm speaking to the airways. Second Samuel 9 and 4. Open your spirit. I need you to hear this. Is there anyone left from the house of Saul? Do you know anybody from the house of Saul that I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Do you know anybody going through a struggle? 
that I got the ability to bless. Watch this. Now there was a servant of Saul's house named Zeben. They summoned him. They said, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. David looking for somebody that he can bless. He did not stand up and say, no, I need a blessing right now. But he knew exactly who needed it at the right time. See, that's when y'all were supposed to worship. He said, now listen, you are Zebra. Yeah, I am. I know somebody that need a blessing right now. See, that's when y'all are supposed to run around the church. He said, I know somebody that needs a blessing right now, this very hour. The king asks, well, go get him. He said, but I need specifics. I need to know, is there anybody still alive from Saul's household? Well, yes, there is. Let me go show up to you. He ran and he said, look, there is one individual, but he's been crippled since the age of five. He's lame in both of his feet because something happened. His nerve. Yeah, but I saw what just happened, Michelle. I know the vein in which I speak. Did y'all just get chills? I see y'all don't understand what just happened because again, as a prophet, I hear God and I do what he told me to do. See, y'all don't get what just happened. Well, let me bring them up the park. The Lord told me to read this. And just when the Holy Spirit brought me to this scripture, Richard walked in. See, what y'all don't understand is two years ago, his sister was in the back of the church on New Year's. And she said, my brother is in a coma. I said, put the phone up and let me pray for him. And he walked through the door. Good to see you. Good to see you walking in the land of the living. See, he was in a coma, unresponsive, in a vegetated state. And his sister walked through the door on New Year's and she said, I just want you to pray for my brother. And I said, where is he? And she shared with me where he was. I said, give me the phone. He coming home. And there he is. Don't tell me what my God can't do. Don't tell me what my God can't do. Don't tell me what my God can do. Good to see you. Make sure you get a brothers. See, God always confirms his word. Because I was reading right where the man was lame and could not walk. And so God said, who can I bless? Well, there's confirmation. God said, I'm looking to bless somebody today. Watch this. This young man was lame from the age of five. What happened is his nurse dropped him. 
And David said, where he at? Go get him so I can bless him. He said, well, he's in the house of Makar, son of Aminah, in Lodabar. And David said, well, go get him and bring him to me. Have a seat. See, it kills me. See, God already confirmed the word before I could even speak it. Because God told me today something is going to happen when God is going to release something because most people don't know how to get free. Watch this. He said, it is the covenant that breaks the curse. And most of you don't know what that means. He said, today, your covenant shall break your generational curse. Your covenant shall break the generational curse. They get that. <laughs> your covenant is about to break the generational curse. Y'all didn't get that. God said it is your covenant that's going to break the generational curse. She get it. Y'all don't get this thing. He said it's your covenant that's going to break the generational curse. See, that's how you break it. He said it's your covenant that shall break the generational curse. Y'all didn't get that. He said it's your covenant that shall break the generational curse. He said today it's your covenant that shall break the generational curse. It's your covenant that shall break the generational curse. Let's go, y'all. It's your covenant that shall break the generational curse. You won't go back. It's your covenant that break the generational curse. Oh, cancer, you got to go. And as she, alcohol, you got to go. Poverty, you got to go. Financial debt, you got to go. God said your covenant shall break the curse. Stay right there. Stay right there. Watch this. See, something happened here. And these women and some of these men, they get it. Because generational curse has been running through your bloodline for years. And you don't know how to make it disappear. But God said something happened to the man that was lame and crippled since birth. God said it was the covenant that broke the generational curse. Watch this. Saul's sons all died. You can't make your child pay for your sins. Even the Bible said, how can a man eat grapes and his children feel the gnashing of the teeth? God said to wake up and tell you your generational curse breaks because of the covenant you make. Watch this. Your daughter, heartbreak after heartbreak, it's the covenant that breaks the curse. You're in domestic violence and you can't get free. It's the covenant that breaks the curse. Financial you from check to check, but it's the covenant that breaks the curse. And I don't care if they tell you you got cancer. It's your covenant that shows you. Watch this. Something summons David to go to Lodabar. See, the people that are here, they're in a season of Lodabar. Lodabar is a place where nothing grows. Lodabar, Lodabar is a place where nothing has aquaculture. It simply means it's a dead place. Ain't nothing growing, ain't nothing prospering. You find yourself in one hell situation after another. If you're in Lodabar and you know what I'm talking about, you need to raise your hand and say, God, I need you. You went to your family member, they broke too, they can't help you. You went for doctor after doctor after doctor. But God said, Lodabar is a perfect place for me to go find you. Now, here we go. Watch this. The Bible said that David, he said, I got to find somebody to bless. So if you're looking at me and you're in trouble, yeah, this is your time to be at this altar and pass this test. Because God said, I'm looking for somebody I got to bless. Will you be in that number? Will that be you? Oh, I feel balls in my spirit, friend. But let me come and give this scripture to you. God said, now watch this. He said, David, ah, oh, David, I need to bless someone. Go find him in his crippled state because I'm about to blow his mind. Watch this. But something happened. Watch this. Why did he go to Lodabar to find a cripple? Why would he go down to Lodabar where there was nothing? 
because God said, I got somebody looking for you. Why would he go down there, Fred, to load the bar? Why would he go searching for somebody that could not walk? Because God said, I got something for them. Watch this. Watch this. Saul's children were in a mess because of their father. Some of you can't love because you didn't know how. Some of y'all don't know how to do something because, unfortunately, you were not cultivated for that. But God said that ain't got nothing to do with the promise that I've got on your life. Watch this. The Bible said that every generational curse has the ability to be broken with a covenant. Well, if you don't believe me, let me go to the scripture because you've been asking God, how do you do it? You still don't know. The Bible said that David and Jonathan were friends. Well, if you don't believe me, let's, 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 let's go to the scripture again. The David said this, that Jonathan and I were knitted from our soul. But y'all didn't get that? Watch this. It was a covenant that David had with Jonathan. And he remembered his son. It had nothing to do with the lowdown father. See, the covenant is how you break the curse. It's I am going to have a covenant with God. And you keep going back to people that you don't have covenant with and expect God to move in it. And God said, that's not how you break the curse. That's how you keep finding yourself over and over and over and over and over and over, and over, and over again in it. And God said, no. It's a covenant. The Bible said that Jonathan and David had such a covenant that after Saul set out to kill David, it was Jonathan. The Bible said that Jonathan took off his coat and placed it on David. And he said that was the covenant that made David remember. See, God said that's how you'll break a curse. The curse is broken through covenant with me. And I don't care if your mother was an alcoholic. I don't care if your father was an alcoholic. I don't care if you keep going after people that don't love you. God said, you can break the covenant by being in covenant with me. Watch this. Let me do this. And then I got to go. But what is a covenant? What is a covenant? A covenant is something. It's like a promise. It's a treaty. It's a deal. It's an agreement. And most of you have a breach of con contract. Every time you go lay down with the person you're trying to get free from, that is considered a breach of contract. And God said, your contract is with me. Leave it. The Noahic covenant was where God made a covenant with Noah and the creatures. And the covenant creating a promise where God says, I'm going to save your life. Because even Noah had a covenant with God. Why? It saved the family's life. See, y'all don't understand. You've got to make a covenant with God. He don't want, listen, listen. It's the covenant that God, I won't pick up another drink anymore. And I mean that. It's the covenant that God, if you deliver me from this, I won't go back. And I mean that. It's the covenant that God, if you make a good steward over my finances, I won't. I promise you. The covenant of God means it's a. Watch this. Watch this. I want to show you something because y'all don't get this thing. Let me bring the Abrahamic covenant into this because it simply means that even David had a covenant with God. But Abraham had a covenant. Watch this. He said, I will circumcise everybody to come in covenant with the promise on my life. suicide I'm 
make a covenant with you, God. See, a covenant is deeper than the promise. It means that no matter what, I won't break it. A covenant is so deep with God and most people keep asking, how do I break a generational curse? How do I do that? It's a covenant that even Abraham, he circumcised everybody in his loins. Watch this. He even circumcised his slaves. Watch this. And if you don't believe me, understand that it wasn't a white and black thing. It was a black thing. Because even Joseph, when he came out the pit, he was sold into slavery. So that means everybody, whether you own them or not, Abraham said, they will fall under this Obrahman. The covenant was so great until it made his family wealthy. See, why is your family in debt? Why is your family struggling? Because the covenant has not been made. And God said, if you make a covenant with me, I will help you with every situation. See, when you got a covenant with God, there's fear in breaking it. with fear that there is a penalty if I decided to go back and let, let me help you with something why keep making these false promises to God he said the day you hear my voice hard not your heart he says and I can bring a covenant that can save your family I just need one person to make a covenant with me Abraham was one person that made a covenant with God and saved his entire bloodline. And you keep asking God how? He says, because you got broken promises. A covenant is a legal binding contract with fear that I will not break it no matter what. I will not, no death, no angel, no demon in hell shall separate me. Black men, where's your covenant? Where's your covenant? The covenant is so powerful that the angels in heaven help seal the deal. Generational curses is simple. Let me give you an analogy. Just go ahead and keep crying. Y'all just need to go and give out the box of tissue. Two sons, one father. One son goes on to be a lawyer. The other son goes on to be an alcoholic. Same father. Two different mindsets. One decided to make a covenant. And one decided I'm going to follow the curse. See, it's all how you look at it. And when you ask these young men, how did you go to be an Ivy League graduate from Yale in law school? He said, because I saw my father drink himself to death. And then you ask the other one, how did you become an alcoholic? And he said, because I saw my father drink himself to death. generational curses in your life is predicated on how you see your circumstances. Make God a covenant. That God, I don't care what happens to me. If you and I are together, I don't care what happens. That if you and I will touch and agree, he said, where two or three are gathered, I will be in the midst. And if you can agree with me, God, I can walk away from abuse. I can walk away from domestic violence, God. I can break a doctor's report, God. I 
I can move away from bringing an addict God. I can move away from being poverty stricken. I can move away and be a homeowner God. I can move away and love myself. I ain't got to struggle with my sexuality God. I can move away and I can be greater. I can move away and I can be bigger and turn to my family and say what are y'all waiting for? It's the covenant that God wants today. See, y'all don't get it. I, I, I like messages like this, husband, because yokes are breaking because God showed me. He said, this is a spiritual intervention that if you could stand and make a covenant with God and say, God, I promise you, this is not a promise. I make a covenant. Watch this. Let me tell you, Abraham was so serious with his covenant until he circumcised those. And even though you were supposed to be the age of five and up, he circumcised grown men. Which simply means that's how serious he is. Covenant means that if I got to lose my life, I will stay in the face of God. Covenant means that I don't care how much you talk about me. I'm going to stay in the presence of God. Your children are looking at you. They want to know how you get out of this. Tell them, God, show me a more excellent way. God, show me a more excellent way. The covenant is the more excellent way. And every generational curse. You got to leave here today Because today I make a covenant with God That I don't care what y'all do I am making up my mind To stay connected To the only man that can fix this mess God said It's the covenant that breaks the curse It's the covenant that breaks the curse Every generational curse Make a covenant with God And I guarantee you You can save yourself You can save your son You can save your daughter Your child won't be suicidal God said make the covenant Everybody stand yourself and say self I can no longer pay for my parents mistakes I can no longer pay for my parents mistakes I did not do that I am not responsible for your pain See, some of you can't make a covenant with God because you made a promise to your parents. You made a promise, yeah, you did. And you can't hold to that promise because they don't appreciate you no way. But God said, you're not responsible. You're not responsible for your parents' pain. You're not responsible some of you feel responsible for your children's pain. You've done the best you could. God said, if you make a covenant with me, I'll protect them. See, that's what I had to do with mine. Some of you, you say, God, I don't know what else to do. God had to check me, husband. He had to check me, he said. Some of us, we have ruined our children because we have given them everything. And now they don't know how to survive as adults. And God said, you're enabling was not part of the covenant. He said, if you go do everything what you need me for, I'm going to 
don't give out tissues in the back. See, the hardest thing you can do, oh, I like messages like this because everybody cries. The hardest thing you can do is give your child everything and they break your heart. Ah, I don't know, son. And God said, the covenant wasn't with your kids. Oh, oh, he said, the covenant was with me. He said, now you can't do nothing with them. Go back to the covenant you made with me. Now chain them a child in the way that they should go. And when they get older, they won't depart from it. Oh, go ahead. Just let the tissue hear God. Stop. See, the yokes is breaking. Yokes is breaking. Yokes is breaking. See, yokes is breaking right now. God said, yeah, come on. Show God. Stop. He said, yokes going to break today. He said, the covenant breaks the curse. You talking don't break the curse. God said, it's the covenant with me that breaks every generational curse. I love you, Shem. I love your husband. Go ahead and let her cry. She fine. See, that's what's happening here. Yokes are breaking. Yokes are breaking. That's right. Yokes are breaking. Come on, Tay. Yokes are breaking. That's it. That's it. That's yokes are breaking. Yokes is breaking. Yokes are breaking. God said the covenant is with me. Yokes are breaking. He said, You've done all you could. Now make a covenant yokes with me. He said, It's my covenant that yokes breaks. Break. Listen. He said, it's my covenant that will hold back death. It's my covenant that'll make them put the pills down. It's my covenant that will renew their mind. It's my covenant that can go and speak to them in a jail cell. It's my covenant that can save your family. It's my covenant. He said, it's my covenant that can keep the family together. He said, it's my covenant. Yokes are breaking. It's my covenant. Yokes are breaking. Listen. Yokes are breaking. Keep saying that yesterday. Yokes are breaking. As I looked at the video of the people shooting. Yokes are breaking. And Concord Mills. Yokes are breaking. I laid in my bed and I said, God, I thank Yolks you. Yokes are breaking. I thank you for your mercy. Yokes of praise. He said it was your covenant. Yokes of praise. That held back death. It was your covenant. Yokes of praise. And I'm saying some of you right now. Yokes of praise. You don't even know that you were on the verge Yolks of suicide. Yolks of saw her. But God said it's the covenant Yolks you made with me today that will change your mind. God said Yolks it's the covenant. Of it's the covenant that has saved Yolks your marriage. It's the covenant. That will renew your mind It's the covenant That can have the call That says you got the job Cause I provide In the covenant He said I heal in the covenant I regulate minds in the covenant He said that's how you break Yokes are break Hear me today I love messages like this Because the tears symbolize That feathers are falling Yokes are breaking there's a young man in the back. He's in front of you, Les. I'd like to pray for him, please. Those of you who are under the sound of my voice, just lift your hands and make a covenant with God. That covenant you make, some of y'all need to be here at the altar. That covenant you make with God guarantees you the place that you never thought you could get to. That place guarantees you uh, that God will provide. Uh, that spot guarantees you uh, that it's between me and you, God, uh, and nobody else. Uh, it's a contract uh, signed, sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ uh, that God remembers you because uh, you made the covenant. Uh, your mama ain't make it. You made the covenant. Uh, your daddy did not make it. You made the covenant. Uh, your boo didn't make it. You made the covenant. Uh, your kids ain't make the covenant. Covenant, you made the covenant. Huh? Your daughter did not make the covenant. You made the covenant. Huh? And God said, open up your mouth huh? and make a covenant with me. I can have a place where I can run to. Where I can run. I 
can run to, where I can run to. And I, I can have a place where I can run to, where I can run to. David and 
Jonathan that fell on the film ship. And he said, that is the one. Everything in your life that is crippling, leave her there. Give it to God. Everything that is crippling and dead, give it to God.
that covenant saved this family. Abraham made a covenant. And that covenant provided. without a covenant from God. There's no way to break a generational curse without a covenant with God. See, I'm hugging Keon because Keon was in a state where he was unresponsive. And it was a covenant that Terry and Corey made with God. He stands here today. He walked out of car accidents. Because every time Terry twirls, she makes a covenant with God. But every time Corey stands there, they make a covenant. See, y'all don't understand. Your covenant saved your kids. The covenant saved my daughter. The covenant saved my son. And y'all keep talking without a covenant that God said. You ain't got to talk. You ain't got to go in the room no more. Make a covenant with me. You feel like you're going to lose your mind. You feel like you are this close to snapping. And God said, your covenant with me is going to give you peace. Oh, you don't believe me? See, Noah made the Noahic covenant. And God gave him peace in the middle of hell. And y'all keep on talking and talking. God says, I'm going to need you to stand still and know that I am God. Make a covenant with me and I'll handle everything you got a problem with. This pandemic ain't playing with us. Every time the Lord shows me something in the spiritual realm, I have to go in the covenant for the people of God. There were all kinds of covenants in the Bible. It was wine covenants for those of you who want to know about a wine covenant. There was a wine covenant. Circumcision. Whatever they did to seal the deal, that's what they did. And don't you dare make a promise to God without a covenant. See, a promise is a breakable. 
How many people know someone that broke a promise? Some of you probably broke some yourself. Oh, I promise you, God, if you get me out of this, I won't do that no more. Well, God, I promise you. Uh, where are my single ladies at? You know good well. Lord, I promise you, if you get me out of this relationship, I'll never go back again. I never, I ain't going to never sing in the spirit. The phone ring. And there you go on 77, 85, 287. Barely got gas. He ain't going to give you no gas money when you get there, but you're there. Say it again. Let me say it again for the people in the back. He is not going to give you gas money when you get there. Some of you make covenants with people before you make it with God. It's true. It's real, real talk. You remember when you was a little girl, little boy, you used to prick your finger and put your fingers together like this? You was blood sister and blood brother. You made a blood covenant. Yeah, right. Eh, that ain't work. See, covenants come with fear. It comes with fear. And the fear is, if I break this lease with God, I'm in jeopardy. See, that's the kingdom principle. And most of you, well, how do I break this generational curse? How do I break? Let, let me tell you something. I, Every witch and I speak to the witch that tried to attack me on Monday. You did the wrong thing. See, right now, I don't want to play. Because witches are real. And most of you need to get a covenant with God because voodoo is all in your family. Voodoo, hoodoo, witchcraft, hoodoo, black magic, white magic. And so this is what they tell you to do because this ain't working. So statistics say that now you have more people going to white witches than anything now. So I bind that demon up. You worshiping crystals and, 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 and come on, come on, come on. you know you are. You got salt demons and you reading tea leaves and you got that You go to the sorcerer. You got Lady Cleo, Lady Heo, and Lady Ho Ho all in your front. What? What you saying? Like I said, and so I suffer the witch not to live. And I'm not going to listen to me. Wait, 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 hold on. Let, 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 me, let me get it right. Because they have to get it right. I'm not going to cuss you out. Because that's called profanity. It's the difference between profanity and cursing you out. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to curse you. That every time you lift your finger up to put a spell on me, my husband, my kids, this church, and the people in it. I speak every artery in your body to collapse. I speak your heart failure. I speak to your mind that you will be tormented. Hold on now, hold on now, hold on. No, 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 no. See, I can do that because you don't know your scripture. Oh, see, I'm going to do you, I'm going to pray like David prayed. Okay, see, he know what I'm talking about. I pray your kids die. Oh, uh oh, -uh, what, what, what? She said, who, what? No, David prayed like that. Uh, know your scripture. I pray your kids die. Oh, he, he got shot. See, he get it. Oh, he know what she did. Yeah, David prayed like that. I pray your kids die. I'm not playing with witches. I'm not playing with you sage burners. I'm not playing. You can walk around my church. You can go to my Facebook page. No weapon form against me shall prosper. No weapon form against my husband shall prosper. No weapon form against my kids, this church, and this ministry. I summon the witch not to live you want up.
am not afraid of black magic, white magic, hoodoo, voodoo. I'm not afraid of no voodoo dolls. I'm not afraid of that stuff. Every time you go to my page and you try to cast a spell, I hope you listen. I'm not going to say I hope nothing. I'm a prophet of the living God that said, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Everybody that say this is a cult, death be unto you. Everyone that say this is a cult, death be unto you. Death be unto you. There's some people doing the will of God and we ain't got no time to play. Death be unto you and your family and your children. See, I'm not afraid of the devil. The bottom line, he afraid of us. You let these people's finances go. You let their mind go. You let their health go. I break every generational curse that's in the family bloodline. It's time for y'all to get serious with this thing. It's time for you to get serious. If you're in a relationship and you keep going back, you need to just lift your hands and say, I am not going back. Because God said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. And God said, today, that curse is broken. You keep going back with an expectation. God said, if you go back, expect to fail again. And God said, I'm every curse. this day I want you to take two minutes and I want you to make a covenant with God that means this is me I'm going to show you my daughter said to me she said mommy I thank you for being a good mother our son is home sleeping he here he live here now and she said to me she said I thank you. Watch this. I'm going to show you. Come here, Dylan. I'm going to show you all how to break a generational curse right now. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud that you graduated with your bachelor's. I'm proud that you have a 3.0 GPA. I'm so proud of you that you made a choice to go to college thank you. You made a choice not to get on drugs. You made a choice not to be a teen mother. You made a choice to walk in a way. I'm proud of you. I, you've done things that I could not do. And I push you and I applaud you. And anything that you need to survive, Dylan, me and daddy got you. And you don't have to worry about a man not loving you because with me and dad, we're going to make sure that he does. You don't have to worry about running away. We got you. And we may not understand everything, but we're going to try our best. Do you understand? See, I just broke a generational curse. See, I, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. See, I just broke a generational curse. And Fred broke one too because when she was going out yesterday, he grabbed her hand and he said, you're a diamond. See, we got eight 
kids. He grabbed it. He's out. Right, you can record it. They hold on. He a dime, you a diamond. And if he don't do the right thing, daddy coming. She hadn't heard that. I ain't afraid to say it. She hadn't heard that. And she got a dad. She ain't a period. And so generational curses mean that I'm going to step up. And I'm going to speak in my children's spirit because it wasn't spoken in mine. It means that I'm going to make sure that what I didn't get, I'm going to make sure you do it. Every mother that's jealous of her daughter, shame on you. Every father that did not step up and dance with your daughter or show your son something, shame on you. Because God said, you're breaking a generational curse because what you're going to do is you're going to raise up and you're going to be that force that they need. Sit down. My husband is giving me that eye. Y'all sit down. We get ready to go. Is that you? Who's this with you? I can't hear over the man. Ooh, okay. He yelled it. That's my fiance. See, husbands, ladies, they come. They come. Is, we get ready to go. Let me see that book real quick, that piece of paper. We get ready to go because my husband said to me, he says, I have to take you away. He did. He said, I have to take you away. He said, I have to take you away because you have to rest. And see, listen, I'm, I'm going to help y'all. My mother didn't have a successful marriage. And I thought that I wasn't. I ain't going to lie after a few tries. Because I ain't got the patience. I didn't hear what I'm saying. She said, no, I ain't got the patience. I'm a fighter. Right, Travis D? I'm a fighter. You, you ain't gonna talk to me any kind of way. You ain't gonna put your hands on me. No, it's not going, no, no, it, this ain't going, no, no, no. I don't care. You gonna talk about me. I had one husband, two husbands. I don't care if God give me 99. The book's muffed with him. And some of us, you know what your generational curse is? You're afraid to be lonely. Oh, that's a curse. So you stay broken, busted, and disgusted. What you crying for? You got a good man. You better not be crying. Less is a good man. Her husband right there. Woo woo. And I thought that generational curse was going to get me because in my family, we got a lot of single women. Ain't that it? And I said, God, I know what it is to be a good wife. I just need a good man. I didn't say a man. I said a good one. And so I said, God, I'm going to make a covenant with you. And I did. Ooh, there he is. And I applaud my husband. I applaud you for being a good husband. He took, y'all come on here. He took the men out yesterday and they went bowling. Thank you, baby. And he said, what I'm doing is I'm making men. I'm getting them ready to be husbands. Because husbands coming to Unity Church Charlotte. I'm sorry, they are. And he said, what I'm doing is I am making men. You know, sometimes your son didn't see a man. It's true. And so I thank God because in my household, it's a real man, y'all. It's a real man. He get that deep Ufasa voice. Listen. And so I said, God, I'm making a covenant with you. I said, God, I just don't want a man. I need a man of God. I need him burnt to a crisp. Huh? He's specific. I was specific. I said I need his voice deep. I need to be a good dresser. And I need him to know how to move. Wait, 
hold on now. See, the problem y'all have is y'all not specific. Because you can ask for a car and God will give you a car and it ain't got an engine in it, but it's a car. And so I specified. And I said, God, I can't deal with nobody that's, that's going to be trifling and try to hit me again because I'm going to jail this time for a long time. And God did that. Listen, I'm going to get ready to go. I'm getting out of here because my husband and I, he said, I've got to pour into you, and I appreciate you doing that. I am going to leave with me. This is for me, for me. I am going to leave a grand, please, for my husband and I. That's, our, that's for us. You made a covenant with God. That's between you and God. It's between you and God. That's between you and God. So I seal my covenant. That's me. It ain't got nothing to do with y'all. If you're online and you're one of my celebrity friends and you want to do that, do that. But I'm going to ask those of you, if you could, 85, that's it, 85, just that's, let that be your seed today. And it's a covenant. Iris, where you at? Watch me. Uh, Missy, where you at, Missy? Missy ain't paying attention. I I'm getting ready to leave. She said, I'm paying my 85. Listen, I need you to make sure he's good. Make sure he's good. You hear what I'm saying? Brother James, make sure he's good. James, how you doing? James lost his dad. He's doing good. I want you to make sure he's good. Can I use your husband? She said, oh, yeah, please. I need you to get his phone number, okay? I just need a band of brothers to get around him, would you? A band of brothers to get around him, all right? Just I need a band of brothers to get around him. Missy, make sure he good. Make sure he got food. Make sure he fine. Listen, if you could do 85, do that. If you're online, where you at online? Do 85. That's our covenant. We get ready to go. Trey, get your mic. I need you guys to understand this week, I am going to tell y'all again. Stay out the mall. Stay out the mall. Go online. If you gotta go, go and get out. This week, I need y'all to hear me. This week, I guarantee you, when confrontation starts, you will not lose it. I promise you, you won't. In your home, in your job, with your children, the Lord is about to pour out a peace this week that is going to be strange. This peace is going to be so strange until you're going to look crazy because you are supposed to respond a certain way. But this week, God is pouring out an unusual peace. And I promise you, you shall be confronted. You shall be confronted. Trey, you got your mic? Listen. For I For I know Jesus will. That's all y'all need to know. That's all y'all need to know. For I know. Jesus. 
Jesus will. Now put your hands together like this. Hey. For I know Jesus will. Everybody say, everybody say. For I know Jesus will. For I know. For I problem with your joy is you forgot how to have joy. So if you was hearing one of your favorite old blues songs, I think something will loosen up in you. If you was hearing one of your old R&B songs, hey, I think something will loosen up in you. But because you're hearing something just a little bit different, it's kind of hard for you. Find out! Oh, Jesus will. What are you going to do to find out? For I know. Jesus will. For I know. Jesus will. Jesus will. 
we get ready to go. This is the best way to end the service. Father, we thank you right now for the word of God that was released through your vessel. We pray right now against every spirit of backlash and retaliation. We pray right now, God, against everything and anybody that would try to send anything. We thank you right now, God, that we are covered with the miraculous blood of Jesus. We thank you that every believer in the house is covered with the miraculous blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we walk out of this place in victory. For we know that he lives and that he still saves. God bless you all. Break it down. 